Hey guys, I'm going to be talking about the advanced map parser today and the latest update, which is introducing multi-user support. Uh, people might already be familiar with this tool. It's been out for a couple of years now. Uh, people use it to view zones, to view spawns, and it has up until now had the ability to connect one client to the map in order to see a character being updated on the map in sort of real time as the logs are parsed. Now with this latest update, uh, we have the ability to connect multiple users, so you'd be able to see your own character and your friends or an entire raid, updating uh, however quickly the logs are being parsed, so kind of real time. So I'm going to walk through the steps of how a host would configure their configuration and uh, client and see what that looks like here in the parser. So I've got a couple different machines running just to kind of illustrate that this can be run from uh, really anywhere you can have a separate computer uh, that doesn't have to be connected to the same network. It could be on an iPad. Uh, so right now this is on my Mac and I have two EQ clients running on my Windows machine as well. So I'm going to hop over to the Windows machine and I have two different instances of EQ running right now out of two different directories. Just hanging out on a uh, EQ MU server. And what I want to do first is check out uh, these two separate directories. Uh, what I did first is download the advanced map parser zip and extract it here in the main EQ directory. And so this is for the host configuration right here. I open the config.ini and I set the host to true. So that's all you have to do here. And then open up the advanced map parser exe. And right away da -da -da, it says you're configured as a host and you will accept incoming log parses. And try to help you out a little bit right here to check your public IP. This could be different if you're on a VPN, but here's my public IP right here. And for the client configuration, do the same thing. This would be the other person uh, right here. I just have a different directory kind of emulating um, another person right here. And their config, uh, their host is set to false by default. And now they get the IP uh, that was listed in the shell from there, so the host would have to give them that. And put it right here on the host IP part. Save that and open their advanced map parser right here. So if they do a little ping, check if they can connect to the host, so if that's all good. In this case, it's just a local address, big tech, and they connect to the host. So those are running. All you have to do right here uh, shows that we're already looking at some logs to parse. And we are set up from that perspective. That's all you got to do. And we're going to go back to the remote client right here. Now, this could be on the same computer, it doesn't have to be, but uh, right here it's on my Mac, which is on the same network. So what I'm going to do is put in that network IP right here, and hit connect, and right away we already have a couple of clients uh, listed right here. And you'll see one of them is uh, already listing the, uh, the level, class, and race, and the other person is listed as anonymous, and that's default until the person types slash who. So let me go ahead and do slash who, go back here, and we are updated right here. And we've got a couple different uh, options right here. We can jump to one of these players, so I'm going to do that right away. And I jump to that character right here. We jump back and forth. And we can also delete that too if we don't want to see any more updates from that person. And what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to toggle follow on this character. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this off screen and just move this character on a different monitor and kind of watch the, uh, the movements here in real time. So right here you can see the, the character moving, back up a little bit, and in theory we should be able to zone and see this person pop out into the side as well. going to update in the uh, next zone either until the first lock is received because we don't really have the concept of being able to zone over a zone line and know exactly where you are until that happens. So yep, here we are. We're in South Quenos. Moving around. And I'll just pop back to the other person right here. There we go. And I'll move this person as well. This is the other client. There's tons of settings right here. You can choose how uh, long of a location trail you want right here. Whether it's dash, the opacity, and your character.
character. You can change the character's text color, their, uh, their race, all sorts of fun stuff, just kind of a, as a model viewer here as well. Doesn't really have any functional change, but uh, just for aesthetics. There you go. And of course, everything else uh, here listed in the, the settings for the markers and spawns. And of course, this isn't a real spawn scan of the game, but rather just data that was scraped from the database. But uh, that illustrates the, the concept of multi-user support right here. So I can log in right here. Pretty much anybody can log in who has this ID right here. Think of it as just kind of like a LAN party. Uh, you just distribute that ID and both clients can log in and view the stuff happening in real time. So this is kind of use case wise, you and your friend, you're playing together and you want to be able to link up, you know, and not get lost in a dungeon or somewhere in common lands or greater fate dark and then you can see each other um, on the map at any given point and know where the other person is or also theoretically in a raid setting too if you have you know 20 30 people and you want to be able to manage okay where are they uh, what's everybody's class and level and you can see kind of in real time uh, what's going on with that as well so right now this just got pushed out as sort of an alpha maybe a beta test right now and if there is any feedback, definitely uh, willing to hear that. And the sky's the limit with, you know, as long as we're um, just looking at logs right here, then there obviously are some limitations right there. But, you know, there's, there's quite a bit we can do to configure this uh, to be, um, you know, nicer in some ways to you know, move this configurability to this part as well to, to make this specific to each, uh, each character. But uh, this is currently live right now and usable, so hope people get around to giving it a shot, and I hope you have fun with it. And that's it. All right, see ya.